demonstration and the face mask there, the one that is and the one that isn't. So, so many issues surrounding COVID-19. And um, at, according to Aristotle, uh, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Let's look at it closely. We have in our studios here a notable Nigerian, Dr. Oladui Udubanjo, who is the past chairman of the Association of Public Health Physicians of Nigeria, Lagos State Chapter, and uh, Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Academy of Science. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. Welcome, sir. OK. Uh, you, you watched a bit of uh, what we've been showing, uh, the views about COVID-19, whether it was manufactured as a virus from the lab, and so on and so forth. Some are linking it to the 5G um, uh, network, and so on and so forth. So, so many views. Now, you are a public health specialist. Tell us your view of COVID-19 in relation to all you've heard about the various uh, causes. Well, well, I did catch um, perhaps the end of the transmission there, yeah. but at least from what you've said now, um, talking about um, where did it really come from. Mm -hmm. The currently acceptable narrative is that it came from um, a market in Wuhan, most likely, where people have been eating exotic animals, and, um, and probably a virus from a bat that has gone through mutation through another animal before being uh, ingested by man, and then now can move from man to man. Mm. Uh, the interesting thing, perhaps, people also haven't noted, is that bats host a, I mean, a host of viruses. Bats, in general, are hosts to a number of viruses, and I mean, in the thousands, probably, if not more than that. You know, so it, it's, it, it's implicated in Ebola, it's implicated in many things. You know, so the exposure to such animals is what um, gets us into trouble. But then when we're saying that, okay, it's the 5G saying there is no proof, I say there are uh, conflicting stories. So if Wuhan was the first place in China where they first covered with 5G yeah. uh, radiation, uh, but the other places that have 5G radiation and we didn't get that um, um, COVID mm -hmm. coming from there. Like where? You know, so it's Sweden, like Norway, uh, you know, so there are other countries and all that that have the 5G installed. Okay. At least in some places, if not all, I think Norway is the one that has total coverage. Also, you know, so there are questions. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, from a scientific perspective, you don't entirely just throw things uh, in the gutter. Mm -hmm. You probe them. You know, so I think there are a number of research questions coming up. Some of them we may not be able to address now mm -hmm. until this fire is out. Mm -hmm. You know, but there has to be research into really where this came from. And I'm not really talking about 5G. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about even where they're saying it's from the bat through another animal. Mm -hmm. It's not conclusive. Are you, you know, are but you, that's the most acceptable narrative at the moment. Okay. I'm sure you've heard of the Bill Gates version where he predicted that something like this would happen about five years ago. Right. Now, he's not a medical doctor, as far right. as we know. Right. But he made it clear that it's going to be... Uh, of this magnitude. And he said and we are not ready. Yes, and it's, it's, it's not no, no longer a nuclear war, but a virus. Well, let me say that um, um, Bill Gates is not a soothsayer. Mm. Uh, what Bill Gates said, Nigerian doctors have said for many years, that we're not ready uh, when we face trouble, when we're not getting ourselves ready. Our health system is in shambles. Mm. Uh, we said it when we had Ebola. Uh, we thought people were going to sit down after Ebola and say, okay, uh, we saw that scare. We saw that Ebola was going to deal with us. Mm. We, we saw our gaps. We're going to sort out those gaps now. Uh, but that was 2014. Um, mm -hmm. about, this mm. is six years later. Mm. And uh, the same gaps we had, maybe they're even wider, you know, uh, are still there. So what Bill Gates was saying also was, uh, wasn't was specific about COVID or coronavirus. Mm. Bill Gates was just saying, hey, when you have an epidemic, you are not ready as the world for it. Okay. Uh, we have said it as Nigeria that we're not ready you know, to tackle some of these things. Because issues came up, like again, I'm using the 2014 Ebola outbreak. Uh, there were issues you had to look at. You had to look at personal issues. You had to look at equipment issues. You had to look at ambulance services. Uh, you, I mean, all kinds of issues. It was glaring funding uh, and all of that. Everything was staring us in the face. Uh, but w once it was gone, we went back to sleep. 
you know, I, if I was joking, I mean, some doctors went on strike in one or two states in recent times, just last month, and people were talking, how heartless, how can they do that now? It happened in 2014, you know. And I said, well, now you see it, mm. you are complaining about it now. I said, yes, now that we have this problem, how can they do it now? I said, but when they've been talking before now, did you join in the, in the talks, you know? Did you speak up for them? I said, so if they've been saying it, he said, no, but I mean, whatever they are saying, now it's not, not the time to strike. I said, how many strikes have they had between then and now? Did you pay attention to it? This is the one you are paying attention to because now you are seeing a crisis. That's the problem. Okay, so coming down to our topic this morning, telecom radiation and human immune system, do you want to um, educate our, our, our viewers beyond physics and biology? What can you say radiation is to an average man on the street? Um, radiation is some kind of invisible wave that ensures communication between certain objects, let's call them machines. Okay, so there's a reason why I can pick a telephone and dial even somebody downstairs. He can't see me. Uh, and there's no wire between us. And yet, his phone will ring, he will pick it up, he's hearing me, I'm hearing him, and we're communicating. So there's something that must be carrying that speech in between. That is radiation. So there are invisible things, or let's call them invisible wires, if you wish, that carry information between different machines. So that's, that's radiation. Okay, so from where is this radiation com commonly emitted from? Uh, well, again, like I said, it means that these machines have capability of emitting some of these radiations. So your telephone is emitting something. Mm. Okay. That's the only reason why he can connect to another phone, even somebody who is in America. You are kind of talking and he's hearing you. There must be some invisible wires connecting all of these things that make that to be possible. That is the radiation we're talking about. And it means that every object uh, that is capable of that kind of communication has some kind of radiation coming from it and also going into it. And it's been established that they could have effect or they do have effect on human health. Uh, well, that, that's, that's where the questions arise, mm. you know, which is that um, even for what we have, not for 5G, mm. which in quote we don't have, yeah. for what we have, there are questions. You know, there are several publications you come across that say, oh yes, it's, it has health implications. There are several that say, no, it doesn't have health implications. Hmm. Uh, so the World Health Organization says, maybe, maybe. it maybe. has health implications. Yeah, are we that saying that at that <laughs> level, we cannot establish whether they do or don't? Because I read a speech by the Minister of Health, and he was talking about uh, getting the level of radiation uh, within acceptable limits. Yeah. And he said that if it's within acceptable limits, there are no harms, you know. But if it's above, then it could have uh, uh, some harm. So th that tells me that really radiation, because we are even warned, you know, the use of our phones. Don't keep it too close to your body. You know, don't keep it too close to certain parts of your body and so on and so forth. So that that suggests that, yes, radiation at a certain level could harm uh, the, human uh, body. the human being. I think that's, that's what uh, the picture is. And... Um, it's important we look at that because uh, uh, the people should be educated. Or my, uh, uh, there's uh, a, a man w we were also expecting the studio here. How he, he narrated the story of how uh, the mast, the, the telecom mast, right. close to uh, his sister's house, caused some problems for the sister and those living in that house right. until they had to move away from that place. Okay. That that's situation right. didn't change. Now that, that's um, that's what we call in science. I, I also come from the Nigerian Academy of Science. Yes. That's what we we'll call in science anecdotal evidence. Okay. That's big grammar, brother. Mm -hmm. Anecdotal just means um, you, you bought the latest brand of Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. you, you drove it, then you had an accident. Then mm -hmm. I say, oh, the latest brand of Mercedes Benz is terrible. People who drive it have accidents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all three of you have it. Mm -hmm. And then we say, all three of them had accidents. Okay. Then we say, the latest brand of Mercedes Benz is terrible. The three people I know who bought it, they all had accidents within one month mm. of buying it. Now, it sounds reasonable, uh, but the point is, it is, is it really correct? You know, can I uh, then say that we need to ban the latest brand of whatever? You know? No, I can't quite say that, because I, I have not looked at the fact that the three people could have been drunk when they were driving. Uh, I have not examined their own driving skills. 
uh, and all of that. So that, that's where research comes into the question, which is that you must research things. And there are research methods. There are methodologies. You must formulate your plan, how you are going to actually carry out the research to be able to hit your chest, as we like to say around here, and say conclusively, this is the problem. Mm. No, I, are you telling us that it's not been established that these uh, 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 5G or 4G have effect or that it doesn't have? Well, I'm saying it's not been established. So that's why the WHO even itself says possibly, mm. you know, especially with cancers, it says possibly carcinogenic. You know, that means we haven't established it. Possibly, you know, so there yes. might be. When, there might be not when be. MTN so. tested their 5G in Nigeria here, mm -hmm. the minister made a statement and said that uh, uh, what they've done is a test, but they have not given approval for its installation mm -hmm. in this country until certain tests are done. Right. So does that not suggest that, yes, there's need to establish something that could affect the people. Otherwise, why wait for... Uh, you know, you're right. And in fact, if anything, uh, from everything I'm trying to say, mm. is that we, there's no established um, harm, you know, positive uh, relationship mm. to health hazards. Non-established. Mm. And if, if there's anything I'm saying, mm. is that I'm advocating that those are things to challenge local researchers with you know, it's the same way. We do it with many other things. Hmm. You know, you want to do a project somewhere, you want to build a factory somewhere, they're going to ask you for an environmental impact assessment. assessment what are they saying? Hmm. Is this thing going to damage the environment or not? You know, that's what we want to know before we give you the approval to build. You know, so the same way, uh, let us as a nation, as an independent people, begin to challenge our researchers to say, okay, you know what, we've heard these funny rumors about these things. Can you look into this for us? What will it take for you to do so? You know, and then get it done. It's great that what people have found in other places is to say, the stance of many other governments to say it's not harmful. Uh, but it's also important to reassure your own nation mm. that it is not. And one of the ways to do that is that you do local independent research. Okay. okay. Please, the lights are open now. We we'll ask you to call and share your views with us or ask questions. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, a person who can answer here all your questions, please call now and uh, share your views with us. Okay, sir. So, are, are there any known fact that there could be a possible relationship between the 2G, 3G, 4G, and the 5G with coronavirus? Um, again, no evidence for any of that. You know, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm sounding like a lawyer. <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's important because that's why I gave you the example of somebody who bought a camp, sorry, mm. and used a particular brand. Mm. Um, but that's why I gave you that example. That the mere fact that all three people who bought that brand had an accident does not mean that that brand is bad. Yeah. It could mean all three people were drunkards who were drinking and driving. It could mean all three are very bad drivers. You know, so that's why research has its methods. You know, and you have to design a proper research protocol to say this is how we're going to to, to come to a conclusion on this matter. And that's what we need to be doing. You know, we need to be advocating for research in the country. So what's the difference between this 5G network that they are trying to bring on board and the other networks that we have already? So is it really, really necessary that we need, that we have it here in Nigeria? Well, I, I won't speak, I'll try to stay in my lane as a layman. You know, that would probably be more fitted for a telecoms expert. Okay. However, for a layman, um, what it tells us is that we can do a lot more things um, that we can't do now. You know, we can do a lot more things, including what many people might want to do. Download a video in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, a two-hour video will get downloaded in a few seconds instead of taking you so long. We all know what we go through to get the video downloaded now. Yeah. You know, um, and then maybe from the health perspective, you can actually even do surgeries remotely. So you can yeah. actually have a robot somewhere in a hospital. Uh, the surgeon is here, and the surgeon is actually conducting surgery remotely, controlling the arms of the robot and, and, and doing surgery. Yeah. But because there is no buffering, you know, so whatever movement I make here is made instantly and the same uh, magnitude. Over there, so those are those are advantages. 
Okay, so I'd like you to share your thoughts on what the paper says today from the Daily Independence paper on Africa can be a testing ground for COVID-19 vaccine. And then we have it, as much as we know that the virus is, global, is a global challenge being faced by almost all the countries of the world, it should not be reason for scientists who should be guided by the Vienna Convention to utter words capable of causing more harm to Africans at this period, where everybody should show love and uphold that the factum that binds us together as human. In view of the aforementioned, the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council condemns in totality the statement credited to the French scientists that vaccine being produced for COVID-19 be first tested on Africa simply because Africans recorded lower deaths from COVID-19. Um, well, let me, let me look at it from this perspective. Why are we waiting for somebody to bring us a vaccine or a drug? Why are we not developing our that's a question. What, what, what stops us? Now, this is, this is a, a unique situation where nobody has the answer, you know, so to speak. Nobody, not the Americans, not the Europeans, not the Chinese. Everybody's rushing. We will find the answer. Hmm. We will develop the vaccine. We will develop the drug, you know, whatever. And then when we do, mind you, uh, even if we give it out now for free, it's not likely to be free forever. Hmm. The rest of you will have to buy from us. We're going to patent it, meaning that we own the copyright. Yes. Uh, and then you will have to be buying from us, mm. so to speak. We're going to be very rich, whoever we are. Now, why can't that we be Nigerians? I heard during Ebola that Nigeria has stopped producing vaccines. We used to produce before. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But now, Not at that familiar, time, we they stopped. To, yeah. we, had a, we had a free vaccine. Yes, so I heard. You know, we, we produce yellow fever vaccine. Yes. Wow. Today we are having to import it. We have to buy. We have to queue up on the market, the global market. Is it lack of manpower or it technology? It's the degradation and the disrespect we have had for the sector of health. You know, if this is something we've done decades ago, we were doing it, we produce our own vaccines. Yes. We, we, we didn't have to. It also means, for instance, now we're looking for Forex to send out to buy the vaccines that we used to produce locally. Hmm. It's the same problem. But the Nigerian Academy of Science. COVID-19 and how the government and uh, how, how the government are doing about it. Uh, you know that uh, most of our our workers, all all the whole Nigerian citizens at home, they tell us and uh, other uh, uh, other people, and the and government are taking the way how to to do a face mask. And, you, and government know that Nigerians can provide even millions of face masks that all the women Nigerians can use here in this country. They, they are taking care outside the country, like China, like, like other countries. If government can give Nigerians chance for them to produce this face mask, I know that Nigerians can produce all the women masks that all the women Nigerians will use in this period of time. That's my own contribution. <laughs> Okay, so Anthony right. basically is talking about um, reproducing our own face masks. Why importing face masks from, mm. from China when we can actually produce as our own face mask here in Nigeria? You, you know, this, this ties should. to what we were just talking yeah. about. It's yeah. the same line of thought. Mm. That why are we waiting for people to help us? Uh, what this unique situation calls for, it's, it's, well, what it's telling everybody mm. is that you need to start being self-sufficient. True. That's what it's telling the whole world. Mm -hmm. I was just reading about, uh, is it the Premier or whatever they call him, of Ontario in Canada, complaining that the U.S. blocked, you know, face masks that is coming to Canada, to them, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. what he's saying is, do your own, <laughs> you know. And, and that's the way I see it. And of course, things like face masks, like Anthony was saying, mm -hmm. are a good beginning point, because that's not complex science. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so those are the things that we need to look at. It's great to get all the ones we can get now from China, but why don't we take one, two, three different samples and call up some of our manufacturers? It's not tell us. You don't have to, that's what and they say, should look, do. Sit down, look at this thing. This is what the principles behind it. Mm -hmm. When you put a face mask on, uh, it shouldn't allow me to, any liquid from my mouth or nose to come out. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so there must be something like, uh, something impenetrable, mm. you know some impenetrable kind of material in there yeah. that any liquid stays in and then uh, no, any liquid actually gets absorbed Absorb. and then there is some impenetrable material i mean there's an absorbing material on the inside 
and then there is an impenetrable material on the outside okay. that ensures that no liquid gets in. That's what we're looking at. The Nigerian Academy of Science, do you have any working relationship with the NME, for example, or NAD, your well, local association? Not as strong right. as we wish, but we have been working on building because the Nigerian Academy of Science is the global representative of Nigerian science. Present Nigerian science on all the global bodies. Mm. That, uh, so to, I mean, Do you so conduct so. research? No, it's not a research conduct. Not a research, research. Okay. It's, it's the equivalent of a Supreme Court. So it's the Supreme Court of Science. Really? So you speak, the, just okay. like the Supreme Court does not conduct, uh, it interprets the law. Mm. You know, so when you're looking at it, you say, when the Supreme Court judgment has been given, it yeah. becomes a reference point okay. that this is the interpretation of the Constitution. Mm. So, so time, so lawyers will quote it. And say so in this case, remember what the Supreme Court said then mm -hmm. and said that this is what this means. So that's the way Because it's the, disturbing that after science. 50, 50 how many years of independence, scientifically we don't seem to be making progress as a nation. Well one it, it begins uh, maybe it begins and ends with funding. You know, that's, funding. that's that's the that's the truth of the matter. If I can nail it down well, maybe we'll also call it leadership. Because we talked about vaccines, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. yes. You said it rightly that we used to produce vaccines in this country. Yes. And to think that that chapter is closed now as a nation. Well, we, 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 so well. if we want to talk of yellow fever vaccine today, we have to import them. Yes. Something we were producing here before. Yes. So it's, it's a case of, let, let, don't let me say, funding and political will and leadership. Mm. That's when you talk of funding, you yes. mean there's no allocation to that sector? There's not it? enough. Not enough. Uh, a simple thing people can do is pick up your budget. In most of the ministries, whether state or federal or whatever, okay, uh, I'm, I'm just speaking on the ministries mm. now, just to give us an insight. Uh, there are research institutes, I've not even talked about that, but just look at all of those government uh, ministries and things. Mm. There's a department of planning, research, and statistics there. Look at what budget is allocated to those things. You, if you wish and you want to see even see in a greater light compared to what is uh, put in miscellaneous and what is put in uh, entertainment and then you you will see uh, our view of research you know and if you look at it's it's been shown many times that countries development is equivalent or it rises along with their increased funding towards research and development that's why we have the oil but we don't refine it you know, that's why you, you, you get all the raw products. We have cocoa, but we buy chocolates. We import chocolates, you know. So it's, it's the same issue that is going on in there. Because if you have all of the raw materials, like Nigeria does abundantly, uh, you should be producing all of those things. But what it takes to produce the finished product is research. Let's and look at the story of uh, Governor McIntyre, who has just been cleared of uh, coronavirus. Some two weeks ago, there about he was he tested positive. And we congratulate ourselves now. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Now, reading, reading his story here, he says, My friend recommended black seed oil mixed with honey to boost my immunity. And I, I ate carrots, took vitamin C. And that's it. Today he's out commissioning projects. So he's he's tested negative now. Is that all there is, the treatment of uh, coronavirus? You know, Black seed mixed <laughs> with honey? Carrots. And carrot and vitamin C. <laughs> Again, this is coming from the governor. It's a unique situation. Yes. Uh, and in this situation, people are taking many things. Some may even take it to Gogogoro. But <laughs> do we say Gogogoro is the it's answer? Okay. And mm -hmm. some took nothing. Yeah. And they, they recovered. Uh, and they recovered. So basically, it's the same around the principles of infection and recovery. Okay. Yeah, the story is, is just revolving around the uh, microorganism that infected the person, the person's immunity, um, and the person's genetic makeup. Okay. You know, those are all these. The, you tell stories around all of those three factors. Are, are you saying that to treat a virus infection, you may not necessarily need a particular drug, but depending on your immune system? Well, in some cases, some drugs have been found to be very effective against particular viruses. Mm. Okay, but in this instance, a new one, mm. uh, some drugs have been observed to be perhaps effective. And again, I'm talking about, I'm speaking, I mean, from a scientific point of view, 
which is that you have to be careful before you make a total declaration of saying something is the Absolutely. is the key. The it remedy. looks like it. Two people have used it. They they got well. Uh, but we don't know. Maybe if we had continued and another five people used it, maybe two of them would not get well. You, you, you get out. Mm. So there are principles around how you come to a conclusion, a concrete conclusion. And until that is followed, people will not say conclusively to you, this is it. Thank God he is well. Thank God whatever you use worked well for him. Uh, this is the first rule, is whatever you use should not be harmful. Yeah. You know, you don't want to use something that yeah. then harms you. Uh, so if it's not harming him, uh, and he gets well. Thank God. You know, so, somebody has said that uh, uh, what we're experiencing, now, what we call coronavirus, uh, is the normal flu or cold that we have in our climate. That why it's great or it had more impact in the Western world is because they don't normally have what we have here. Like if you talk of America now, you don't have, they don't normally have the kind of cold or, or Qatar. That we have here, so they don't have know how to manage it. But that in Africa or in Nigeria, we are already used to them, and we can easily have local treatments for them. That that's not um, entirely a true story to tell, you know, because again, in those parts of the world, many people get sick with the flu, um, and and they are dying more and people die, than here, you, and many people die because they don't have uh, any local yes. thing to handle it. Not, not quite because of any local thing. As a matter of fact, at certain times in the year, mm. many people will go for what they call the flu shot, okay. which is the flu vaccine. So they get even the flu vaccine, which we don't get. Uh, but it's not working in this, this instance, no, the no, flu no. Because it's, it's, it's a novel coronavirus. Okay. So basically what it means is that this coronavirus, people have also pointed out certain um, antiseptics and things that have listed useful mm. against coronavirus. Uh, but what you are saying is that this is a novel coronavirus. This is a new, in quote, like uh, somebody, I mean, said it, a new member of the coronavirus family. Mm. You know, so the coronavirus is a bunch of viruses, uh, but this is a new member that had not been known before. Okay. Okay. So with the um, decision the federal government made to bring in new doctors from China to help um, curb the spread of coronavirus here in Nigeria, what's your take on that? Uh, well, I'm a physician, and I think the enemy has spoken, hmm. you know, which is, it has several implications, and I think the enemy response should be taken very seriously. I know the minister said, oh, the enemy is also a member of the enemy, he's a physician himself, uh, and his door is always open, that's where I, sh I shrunk a little bit, and hmm. I felt, no, it shouldn't be about the door being open, it should be about the enemy being invited, okay. you know those discussions should have happened yeah. uh, and should keep happening. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the enemy should be part and parcel of every discussion on this matter. Mm -hmm. And especially as relates to treatment, uh, bringing in equipment, it, it's not entirely off you know, to say, oh, we think we might need help. But what also the enemy is saying is, how did you arrive at that? That's it. You were not you consulted? Know? Yeah, we were not consulted. How did yeah. you arrive at that? And if you arrived at that, you realize that there are also extra laws guiding medical practice in the country, you know, so the people you are bringing in, are they allowed to practice? Are they registered here? Are they, are they going to first come in and stay quarantine for 14 days? You know, is it that you have skills gap in the country to manage it after all people are getting well in the treatment centers? What exactly is your problem? But I think it's just about talking. And that talk should have happened. Unfortunately, it, it, it apparently did not. Uh, but we hope that this has highlighted that to everybody. Mm. And they would recognize that there's no way they go forward without pulling in, not just even the enemy, but all the other associations should be discussed with um, about what is going on and how this needs to be handled. We need to come together. Uh, we can't handle it by ourselves, and government can do it by itself. That's the truth of the matter. Uh, there's no way you can handle it as a government without the support of those, those associations, you know, you'll have to, you'll have to bring them on board. Okay. The, 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 what the paper said this morning was that the, those doctors, if they come in, will not have contact with patients. I, I don't know, maybe if they are not going to have contact with patients, how would they be working? Okay, so I, I think they, they, they're trying to clarify mm. that aspect of they're not registered to practice, so they cannot attend to patients. Uh, but basically, they will be there to share knowledge. 
of you know what they know about this and mm. how they did it you know how they handled it in china so for instance i can tell you what treatment protocol we followed uh, what treatment protocol we are following because they are still dealing with it also in china i can tell you this is what we are doing uh, and all of that but let me again underscore you know along with the enemy uh, that it is always always important to put your local uh, expertise, professionals, research first. First. Uh, people around the world. It's, it's a global competition, not just for COVID, but in general. Mm. So people don't share with you actually everything that they know necessarily. Uh, there, there are things that are called trade secrets. Yeah. You know, and there are certain things I may not want you to know because it, eventually it's going to make us money. Eventually, it's going to make me master. It's going to make me superior. You know, so we need to know that we must pay attention to local research, uh, local expertise, and not only not only because of the global competition to, to get ahead in the world of research and development, but also because when you put the local research and all that there, you also tend to engender trust within your own communities. You know, there's something about putting up people that people respect as being knowledgeable experts and blah, uh, and things here. When they then speak and say, yes, we have worked on this, we have done this, this is what it is. There's a confidence and a trust that you build. We had a series of uh, virus uh, infections in this society. We had uh, Ebola, Zika, MERS, SARS, now we are talking of uh, CV, coronavirus. Oh. Is this how we are going to continue? Are we expecting another one after coronavirus? Mm. We better. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Anthony. Yeah, uh, I I really appreciate God for what God is doing in this country. God is really protecting us, and at least we can see that God is helping us to curb the the issue. I necessary down so far that uh, most of the cases recorded by the grace of God they were healing and they were sending back to their houses. So I think what uh, the Mr. President should do is to equip our doctors and those professional more so that they can do more. And I continue spreading the news about this uh, coronavirus of a thing so that everybody will be aware, keep themselves and uh, be protective and uh, preventive. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Okay, you were telling us more about, you said it, it's better we have more. Did you say no, 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 I said we, we better be prepared for more. Okay, better be prepared for yes, more. Yes, because uh, we, we, we talk about imagine and reimagine infections. You know, imagine meaning that there are new things that are coming up. You know, so we've seen a novel coronavirus that shut down the world. Uh, we saw Ebola that basically shut down West Africa in 2014, 2015. You know, several countries in West Africa mm. were shut down, economies affected. Six years later, we're dealing with this one that shut down the whole world. Uh, in between, or is it about 2012 or so, they've had MERS. SARS, uh, so Zika. yeah, Zika, and the truth of the matter, for instance. So when we talk about imagine, mm. imagine is novel coronavirus never seen before. Okay, reimagine means you've seen it before, but it seems to come back again, sometimes with a different bite. Uh, so even I said that because you mentioned Zika, for instance. Mm. So when we start hearing about Zika, uh, one of our renowned viro virologists, Professor Tomori Affairs fellow of the Academy of Science said, hey, Zika used to be here in the 60s. Mm. And all that, we worked on Zika, we researched Zika. In Nigeria, yes, yeah, we have Zika virus here. Mm. Uh, but the question was, so Zika was known, okay? But suddenly it showed up again. Mm -hmm. So that's what you call reimagine. Okay. It showed up again and it was causing problems. And he said, well, why it didn't even cause problems like that then? And why it's causing problems? where it then showed up again and was causing problems, has to be researched. Mm. And th th that's why we say we just need to be ready. So we need to, to be more proactive in our country. That's the 
message here today. Let's prepare for the future. Let me ready as a uh, that is not my name now. I'm Pedro. You are right, Pedro. Pedro. Sorry, Pedro. Uh, we're rounding off now. Um, uh, he's been our guest, okay. and uh, he's the executive secretary of the Nigerian Academy of Science. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank Thank you, Thank you so coming. much for coming. Okay. Okay, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll round off for today. Don't go away. <laughs>